<laughs> what is going on guys so today we are back with another video today we're diving deeper into the jungle cup by looking at a pokemon that you guys have voted for in the last several days you guys have voted for linoon to be our next pokemon so i don't know if it's linoon linoon I don't know. I'm just going to say Line Noon because that's the way that I've always said it and it makes a little bit more sense. Line Noon today is a pure normal type Pokemon maxing out at level 40 with 15s totally across the board. We do have 1662, which is pretty decent. Now with a 0 in attack, 15 defense, and 14 stamina at level 40, you can hit that 1499, which does keep us in great league territory there. Now according to my spreadsheets and all the numbers that I have ran, Linen should be around 24th in bulk and 16th in stat product, which is actually pretty decent. And of course, all of that does come from our base stats here with a 142 on attack, 128 defense, and 186 in stamina. Now, moving into our moves here, we do have an interesting little toolkit. I actually think this is where a lot of the normal types get some of their uniqueness, is because not necessarily like do they have these crazy good normal type moves, but they have a really big toolkit to kind of work with. And I think that makes it really interesting. So, for our fast moves, we do have Shadow Claw and Tackle, which. Shadow Claw definitely seems to be the more enticing one here. We do sacrifice 0.6 energy by going with the non-stab move here, but we do gain two full energy per turn more than if we went with Tackle. So at four energy per turn for three damage per turn, I definitely think that Shadow Claw is the way to go. Over the Tackle here, which is only two energy per turn for three damage, after Stab it does get bumped up to the 3.6 like we said. Now moving on to our charge moves here, we do have Dig, which is an 80 cost for 100 damage at a 1.25. No Stab here, of course. Grass Knot for 50 energy at 90 damage at a 1.8, no stab here again, and Thunder here for 60 energy at 100 damage at 1.67, and of course no stab yet here again, but there's some interesting toolkits to work with here. So Dig definitely seems to be the most underwhelming move here. At 80 energy for only 100 damage, it's only a 1.25 damage per energy ratio, so the efficiency is actually really low on this thing. Plus, it is our most expensive move, so do we really want to go for something that expensive and not even get a very efficient payoff from it? Probably not. So Grass Knot and Thunder do seem to be the way to go here. For the purposes of this video, we did go with Shadow Claw, Grass Knot, and Thunder as our complete moveset there. Moving into our shields though, we do have some interesting numbers here in this zero versus zero, which is where I don't have any shields, my opponent doesn't have any shields, kind of like a closing type situation, if you will, 47.8 which is actually pretty decent. I mean, that's almost 50% of the cup, which is fairly nice. Now in this two versus zero, we actually have an 89.6% win ratio, which we're not too concerned about that 89%. We're really concerned about the ones that we lose up against. If my opponent actually has no shields and we have two shields, I'm really interested in the Pokemon that still end up beating us. And a lot of the Pokemon that show up here are kind of surprising. They're Razor Leaf users. Yeah, so things like Weeping Bell, Victory Bell, uh, even like Venusaur and Ivysaur, if they run uh, Razor Leaf, they can actually beat us here. And then there's Ursa Ring, which beats us. And then we move on to our zero versus two shield situation where I don't have any shields. My opponent actually has both shields this time. We actually end up winning zero. A big fat goose egg on that one, which really hurts. Next, we have the two versus two, which is where I still have both shields. My opponent has both shields. We kind of have like an opening type situation, if you will. 32.8%. Okay, it did go down, which does mean that we actually do prefer to close with Linoon rather than open, but those are actually some impressive numbers outside of that zero versus two. We're just gonna kind of try to sweep that under the rug and hope nobody sees that one. So now we're actually going to move into some matchups with our line in here, and we're actually going to go over to PV Pokey. You can see we do have it set up on this board here. We do have Shadow Claw, Grass Knot, and Thunder as our moveset, like we talked about previously. We do have one shield for us. On the other side, we are going to do a multi-battle here, custom group, and it is a custom group that I have built. It's just the top 20 Pokemon from the rankings page with a little bit of deviation. Uh, we did actually switch out Geodude for Sceptile, considering that Geodude was... I mean, we do have all that set up there. We are going to give them one shield here once we hit battle. You can see that Lion Dude actually has 10 wins and 9 losses and 1 draw. So, as far as our wins go, we do have wins up against Masquerain, Lantern, Alolan Golem, Alolan Graveler, Pidgeot, Vespaquin, Cradilly, Magneton, Raichu, Noctowl, and then we start to tie when you see that Munchlax here. So with that star, that definitely means that Munchlax is a tie. 
Then we do start to lose getting into the Fortress, Magnezone, Scizor, Ivysaur, Beedrill, Sceptile, Heracross, Venusaur, and Vigoroth there pulling out the hardest matchup for us, which is actually no surprise considering what Vigoroth has in its toolkit versus what we're weak to. Makes a lot of sense there. Next, we're gonna be moving into our countering section here, which basically, if we're in the green, that means that full typing is pretty safe to go up against. If we're in the red, though, we may wanna watch out for those specific matchups. And Lightroom's kind of a difficult one to put here. It's not as like clean cut as we usually see in this section with at least one typing. So, Bug here, we do have eight losses and one tie. Electric, we have five losses and three ties. Grass, we have 10 wins and one tie, and in normal, we have 17 wins and six ties. So it's kind of like split more so in most of these typings than it is just one-sided. So we'll try to go through these and figure out how this works. So with Linoon here again, Shadow Cold, Grass Knot, Thunder, just like before with one shield. We're gonna go up against the entire Jungle Cup this time, give them one shield as well for that evenness. And you can see with one versus one on the shields, we do have a 43.3% if I can see, that is correct. So let's go up against these bug types here. Let's see what we've got. You can see Pineco is our easiest matchup, which is no surprise there. Masquerade, Butterfree, Volby, all wins there. Yen Mega, Vespaquin, Yanma, Ariados. This tie though that we get into is the Ninjask, which I don't know if many people are looking into Ninjask, but I definitely want to see what this little bug can do because holy cow, look at these moves. Fury Cutter, amazing. Shadow Ball, amazing. Bug Buzz, amazing. Aerial Ace, amazing. Like he's got this huge freaking toolkit to work with. I'm really, really curious to see how good this little bug is. So as you can see, we do actually tie up against the good old line in there. So let's back out of here. As you can see, we do start to lose with that Fortress. Parasect shows up, Scizor, and you can see Heracross, Scyther, and Pinsir are our three possible worst case scenarios as far as the bug typing go. But we do actually win more than we lose, so we're gonna count the bug typing as a pretty safe bet. But like I said, it's not clear cut, so you kinda gotta pay attention to some of these matchups. Next, moving on to the electrics here, you can see we do have a pretty decent matchup with Ampharos, Manetric, the Geodude, the Golem, and the Graveler all showing up there, Lantern and Chin Chow. Actually not too big of a problem considering that Shadow Claw lets us get to that Grass Knot pretty fast. So we actually end up doing pretty good there. Once we get down to the bottom here, you can see we do have three different ties, Luxio, Magnemite, and Zapdos. And you can see that Luxray, Jolteon, and Raichu are actually our worst possible matchups there. Now, I'm not 100% sure that the uh, this whole line can make it. Okay, so it is technically possible to get the Lux rate under 1500 at level 20. If you hatch the Shinx or catch the Shinx in a raid battle and trade it, it is possible, but it looks like it's gonna be really freaking difficult. Like at 0% IVs, I think it was like 1425, so... Huh, that's gonna be kind of rough, but it is possible. So we'll say Luxray, Jolteon, and Alolan Raichu here are our worst possible matchups inside of the electric typing, but as you can see, we generally win more than we lose, so okay on those. Now into the ones that we don't necessarily do too great up against, we have the Grass typing, which as you can see, Celebi, Roserade, Lilip, Executor, Execute, Lombre, Cradilly, all of these are pretty safe. The problem here with the grass typing is that we basically have Shadow Claw to rely on, which isn't like amazing on damage, but it's decent. And then we have Grass Knot and Thunder, which do almost nothing up against the grass types for us. So we have a really hard time here. For what it's worth, we do have 10 wins here. As you can see, there are some kind of close wins. Oddish is actually extremely close, which is crazy. And then you can see we actually lose to Turtwig. Yes, to Turtwig. So if we look at our hardest possible matchups, you'll see that a lot of the grass types that have Razor Leaf start to show up down here, like Shiftry, Venusaur, and Sunflora actually rounding out the hardest possible matchups for us inside the grass typing there. So grass typing's pretty rough. I, uh, I mean, you can do a little bit. Last but not least here, we do have the normals. And looking at the normals, it's kind of... Here again, it's kind of awkward. We don't really have a whole lot to go up against, so it's basically gonna be neutral damage versus neutral damage, and we don't really have a whole lot to like go for here. So in the wins though, we do have the Pidgeot, which is nice. Uh, being able to get to that Thunder really helps out some of these flying type matchups that you'll see here. Um, but outside of that, we have some interesting wins, Staravia, 
Uh, also going to be carrying that flying typing, knockdown, far-fetched. Uh, we do tie up against the Baneri, yeah. Uh, tie up against the Giraffe Rig, ourselves, Swellow, Teddy Ursa, Wigglytuff, and then we start to lose. So we lose to Dunsparce, Lickitung, we're just going to skip all the way down to the bottom where you can see Vigoroth, of course, is our hardest matchup. Ursa Ring, which we touched on a little bit earlier, is also pretty bad. And then Zangoose actually has a pretty good fighting chance. Lull and Raticate even showing up down here. So there are some very interesting matchups here. We do generally do worse in the normal matchups than we do with like winning the normal matchups. So I would definitely say that normals is kind of awkward. You really have to pay attention. And that kind of sums up Linoon for me. It's good, but it's still kind of awkward. Like, it, it shows some really good numbers, and it also shows some really bad numbers in the shield scenarios. I mean, it, it's, it does have that 0%, which is always kind of rough, but it's okay. I'm not, like, super impressed with it. I mean, that may be just because we're coming off of Vigoroth, which was, like, the king of the jungle, so what can we really say about that? But... I'd say Linoon is, is, a, is a strict middle of the road for me. I, I don't think that I would, uh, I would be jumping at the chance to catch one. I don't think I would be jumping at the chance to power one up. It's just kind of meh. But that is actually going to be it for today, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks so much for watching. Always remember that if you do have a deep dive, you can comment down below. We have had over 100, I think it was like 130, 150-ish different votes for just random Pokemon out there. Um, that's that's a lot more than we had last month, so I guess that proves that there's a lot of people here. Thanks. Uh, I will throw up here what we do have on the dock for tomorrow, and we will actually get to that ASAP. Um, later on today, I'm gonna be trying to pushing out a, another typing video. I'm trying to do them kind of like 12 hours apart so that it's... It... <laughs> It just kind of gives you ample enough time to watch in between videos. That way it's not bombarding sub boxes and you know, all that good stuff. But anyways, uh, that is actually gonna be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you so much for watching. Always remember that if you like to like videos, you can do that. But if you don't, you can be that guy. Otherwise, let me know what you have to say down in those comments below. And until our next video, I will catch you then.